What's up, everybody? My name is Ryan Turford, and welcome back to First Impressions, the show where I play a game for the very first time. On this week's episode, we're playing Sin and Punishment Star Successor on the Wii. All I know about this game is it's an on-rail shooter, and it's the sequel to an import N64 game that never really came out in North America. That's it. That's all I know about this game. Uh, I've been hearing some good things about this game, though, so I definitely wanted to give it a try. So let's hop into the game. All right, here we go. Sin and Punishment Star Successor. Again, I don't really know much about this game at all. I know there's some interesting history with the original uh, Sin and Punishment game, uh, so I definitely want to try this out. Of course, it's asking us to uh, type in a name in the spirit of the, the Xbox drive. And no, not the car sirens you're hearing outside. Uh, we got to go with this. We got to go with... Because on the Xbox Drive podcast, which you can listen to on your podcast feed of choice, uh, we say bah at the beginning of every show because it's the noise a car makes when it drives away. Get it? It all makes sense. Ooh, you can actually, on the back of the box, it only showed the Wii remote and nunchuck. So I wasn't expecting that you could actually use other controllers. Oh, let's see. All right, let's do this. Let's jump into the game. We'll just play on normal today. Ooh, do we want to play as Issa or Kachi? I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna go with Kachi. And let's start the game. It's all about the pointer controls. I, I like the pointer controls on the Wii for some games. Again, it, when it's not like Waggle Fest, I think that's where the Wii definitely works best. Man, it's been a while since I played Wii games. I keep forgetting how how much like PS2 games they look. I'm playing this on on the Wii U, though. The Wii U is probably the best way to play Wii games at this point. It, it upscales to 1080p. It it uh, it goes through HDMI. It's great. If we take out those intruders, the security doors will unlock. All right, I guess we get to go shoot stuff. All right, here we go. Man, I like the feel of this. This is pretty cool. So we got to uh, hold A to lock onto targets. Okay. I like the floatiness of this. This, looks re this feels really cool to play. I remember the N64 game kind of being like a, uh, kind of like Star Fox, where you were kind of just on rails. But uh, this one feels a bit different. Okay, so I like the mix of it being kind of like an on-rail shooter, like like Time Crisis or something like that, but then you're also moving your character around and you kind of have to like dodge and weave around attacks. Like, I think that stuff's pretty cool. There you go, we gotta evade some lasers. So yeah, the history of, of Sin and Punishment is it actually started out as a Japanese-only release, and then uh, it was the, it was probably one of the most expensive N64 games, or one of them. I mean, there was still the the blockbuster exclusive uh, uh, games back in the day because it never really got a North American release. It was just one of those things where it came out in Japan. It had this really huge cult following, but like you couldn't buy it here, so you basically had to import it and have like a you had to basically mod your N64 to play it. But, uh, but then eventually, it actually came to Wii Virtual Console. So we could finally pick up a copy of Sin and Punishment here in North America. It was still in Japanese, but at least it worked, because like for the most part, we did, just didn't have access to, to this game forever unless you wanted to pay a hefty price to import it. Like it was not cheap to import a copy of this game. Like it, I remember it like before N64 price, prices shot up like they did have now, like this was like the chase game to get for a lot of people. At least when the N64 was new. Kind of like running down the hallways of uh, in Contra almost, where you're basically like blowing up these barriers to get through, and it's got like a very obvious weak point. There we go. I guess I got to use the, this charge attack more often on the doors. And yeah, this right, this section right here just totally feels like old school Contra. Also, I have to remember I have to I can actually dodge through these lasers. Man, I don't like the fact that there's like this like piece of wall that's slightly there that like kind of blocks my shots. Although we can probably use that to our advantage and kind of lead our enemy's shots. Up. All 
Okay, I've got kind of got the hand of, of the evading now. It's a bit tricky at first, but uh, you get used to it. I really like this fluidity of the controls, though. It feels really good to play, even with the Wiimote, which isn't always the best for accuracy, but no, this is doing the job real good. Oh, we gotta shoot the boxes. Hang on. Of course, more of these giant mechs. They don't have nearly as much health as those uh, those doors or those turrets. I'm kind of surprised. I think that's the last of them. Let's get going. So I guess I guess we're leaving the ship. These these weird space aliens found us. Of course, we, of course, there's a giant spider boss. Why wouldn't there be? And his name's Pacifier. Does he like light things on fire? I guess. I don't know. So does this guy have any attacks besides throwing his legs at us? So we basically got to avoid these like flame barrels that are coming. Now he's just got a really big laser that moves really slowly. Oh, here we go. Now we're flying over him. But I think he's just got more uh, more stuff to attack us with from up here. I love this lock-on attack. It just feels so satisfying to use. And then we're kind of just like dodging uh, each of the projectiles. There we go! First boss down. The pacifier is finally dead. Ooh, do we get a rank? Nope, no rank. We've reached a new checkpoint. I'm guessing we're going outside going outside the ship. And now we're on this weird ice planet that has a city below it, I guess. But luckily these kids can fly. Because otherwise, this would be this would be real trouble. Uh, ooh, there's online leaderboards. Let's see if these still work. It's attempting to connect via the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. We can cancel any time by pressing the B button. Oh, the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection is experiencing high traffic volumes or the service is down. What a shocker. T surprisingly, the Wii, no, Wii uh, servers no longer work. I know, I can't believe it in 2020. I kind of wish the Wii servers would work. Because how else are people going to see my scores, man? I'm lucky to be alive. Uh oh, where's Kachi? Kachi? Kachi! No! My character's dead! How could they? Kachi, you okay? And of course, he's just acting like it's normal. I guess a, getting impaled to the stomach is no big deal. Okay then. I don't know the the the, the, the lore kind of, of this game, city. unfortunately. Oh, I'm not interrupting. Hand over the girl. Ooh, and look at this guy. He thinks he's I so tough. He's got his like life. weird metal orbs and his cool haircut. <laughs> Foolish boy, you truly intend to challenge us? Hand her over or die. See, if this guy's so imposing, though, and he can just kill them at any time, why doesn't he just kill him and just take the girl? Like, what's going on? You've made a wise choice. Peel away that mask and reveal your true nature, monster. Take this! Zap. Once again, if this guy's so powerful, why does he need to just kill him already? He's like a James Bond villain. Alright, here we go. I guess we're gonna run down this highway. Also, like, how, how do they already have all these defenses set up here? They've got, like, defensive turrets and all kinds of, like, weird spaceships here. I love how stylish this is. You can definitely tell it's a treasure game. Is all of their all of their games have like this really cool style to them? They're kind of like platinum games in that way. 
You know, whether it's Gunstar Heroes or Guardian Heroes or just any of the other treasure games, they all like make you look cool while doing stuff. So of course, if they can fly, why weren't they just flying through the city in the first place instead of running? Also, I figured those barrels would explode, but I guess not. Oh, there we go. The red barrels explode, but not the not the gray barrels. Also, there's some weird like crab looking things just climbing the walls. God, what's some, these are some weird enemies. Kind of reminds me of playing like something like a 3D version of like Biohazard Battle or something like that. Like all the enemies are like weird, like amoeba or bugs or. I love this lock on attack though. It's so satisfying to use and you get to use it so often. Oh, we got this helicopter again. It's an iron bat. Here we go, let's charge up. Dude with the flamethrower jumped over. Just so much street stuff. Man, I'm like totally in the groove with this game now. This game is awesome. Why didn't I play this game before? This is so fun. Just, I love, like, the arcadey action here. The story, again, makes no goddamn sense, especially since I didn't play the first one. Man, it's so fun to play. Like, the gameplay is top-notch in this game. It just reminds me of, like, going to arcades and playing, like, something like Time Crisis or House of the Dead or, like, other amazing shooters. So we had some really good, uh, like, in shooters like this as well. But, I mean, you had House of the Dead Overkill, Dead Space Extraction, like, so many awesome games that were like this. And, and this is definitely another one that, again, I'm just kicking myself. I'm like, why didn't I play this game when when I first picked it up, like, almost a year ago? I've just, it's been sitting on my shelf. I've just never gotten to it. But it's just, this is so fun. I'm glad we, I'm glad we decided to play this today. Take that, bird. Also, this music is really good, too. It's just, like, perfectly paced for the action. Also, this totally reminds me of playing something like Panzer Dragoon uh, on Sega Saturn. Like, that's a game I love as well. Uh, or Panzer Dragoon Order on the original Xbox. I love that game as well. And that's actually probably the closest comparison I'd give to this. Because it's definitely, like, it feels so much different to play than something like Star Fox. But it's also, I think, more fun than maybe Star Fox is. As much as I like Star Fox, because I like Star Fox a lot, but I actually prefer Panzer, Dra Panzer Dragoon to Star Fox. Man, it's hard to tell where those where those beams are going to be from these construction lasers. Because they're just on such a weird angle. We got another one of these uh, these like jet things. They're not helicopters. I keep calling them helicopters, but they're not. Ooh, now we got the construction lasers coming in. We're messing things up. Oh, there we go. It just crash landed on all the enemies down, down below. There we go. Or is he a boss? I didn't even realize he was a boss. I just thought he was like a really powerful normal enemy. Also, yeah, it looks like the only thing we can use to kill him is our, our charge shot. This way. Let's take a breather in here. Oh no! It's evil dude, evil Bond villain. I don't even know his name. He just works for Neblox. Oh, now we got to fight this dude. Orion Sang. Oh, right, here we go. Let's get these missiles. Come on, get in here with your attack again. Yeah, I'm like, how do I even avoid that? 
I have no idea how to avoid that close counter its attack. Let's see if it does this again. There we go, we got him twice. It's just like, how do I get around that? I can't. I'm stuck in this little, little box here. All right, here we go. Last one. And there we go. We killed the weird Bond villain that is, could have apparently killed us at any time, but for some reason just easily fell to his own weapons. Sure. What? There's like a weird robot head with like, just like random like strains and like a brain and a spine. I'm guessing he's some kind of bad, bad guy, but I don't even know what's going on with this game. It's a very weird game. Very, very, this is a very weird game. Let me tell you what, I have no idea what's going on. Also, now we got another boss, Snapper Keeper. This is cool, though. We're like going down like an elevator shaft. Kind of reminds me of like the uh, the Ridley boss from Metroid Prime 3. I guess I got to kind of like stay inside these circles. Oh, it's like a big turtle. I couldn't really tell what it was when it was all curled up. You blast him in his big mouth. There we go. We've got some kind of power up. I'm just shooting his arm so he hopefully he falls off. Oh, like how am I supposed to avoid that? There we go. It's like this weird, like big turtle with two heads. It's like some kind of weird, like, kaiju, like, Godzilla monster. Just gotta dodge it. This is, like, very obvious claws. Oh. Didn't job, didn't judge that one. Let's see if we can get him in his dumb mouth again. Alright, so I'm guessing now we're gonna fall down the elevator shaft again. All right, let's do this. Let's finish this off, Big Turtle. I'm gonna fire this giant charge shot in your mouth. Okay, we gotta like slowly dodge this stuff. Again, the problem is we can't shoot up, so we can't hit these stupid meteors as they fall down. But we did much better that time. All right, here we go. It's almost down. And there we go. Got this, killed this big giant turtle that just kind of came out of nowhere. And there we go. That's the level. That's the second level in Sin and Punishment Star Successor. And I think that's probably we're gonna put where we're gonna put that in the game today. So let's go to final thoughts. I got things to say, so let's go. And we're back. So it's time for final thoughts and Holy crap, Sid and Punishment Star Successor. This is such a fun game. I can't believe I never played this before again. I, I bought it at my local game store like over a year ago and just it's been sitting on the shelf up there. It's just I'm slowly getting to, to my Wii games. I haven't really gotten to too many of them and uh, I'm glad I'm finally picking them up uh, for first impressions because holy crap, this game was so fun and I'm so glad I decided to play it. The story makes no no sense at all whatsoever. I mean, I think part of it is just because this is a sequel to the original Sin and Punishment and that game had its story in it that like it didn't really introduce any of the new characters um, and it kind of feel, felt like it relied on you knowing what happened in the first game. And unfortunately, I wanted to go into the game as blind as possible and I didn't want to look up any story stuff from the first game because I didn't think it'd be super important or if, if it was important, I figured that they would either do flashbacks or do something to kind of reintroduce some of these characters or show the enemies, especially the enemies, because I'm like, I don't even know what's going on with these guys. Or like when uh, when my when my character was 
impaled when she fell down. I figured she was dead because that's normally what happens when you get impaled by a giant spike. But no, she just gets back up and they just pretend like that's normal as if you played the first game. And like I said, because the first game didn't come to North America, like most of us didn't play it. And I still haven't played that N64 game. Um, and even if I did, it's all in Japanese anyway. So it'd be tough to kind of uh, gauge the story. And especially since this is going to be a worldwide release, I'm very shocked that they didn't try and do more things to kind of bridge the cap gap for players that didn't play the first one. I mean, that's one of the benefits of like modern game sequels um, is that they, if they do have ties into original games, they're either little things that aren't super important to the story, or if they're big to the story, they'll kind of fill you in, fill anyone in who, who missed the first game. And unfortunately, I didn't really get that with this game. So um, the story itself, again, didn't make any sense. It probably if I looked up a synopsis from the first game, though, I'd be like, oh, OK, all this weird stuff that I saw with the giant turtle and the weird helicopter and the dude who was like had this like weird light whip and stuff and the weird like brain like cell or structural or thing. All that stuff is supposed to make sense, right? Right? Maybe. I mean, it would make more sense than what I when I saw it. So ultimately, if you haven't played this game and you like on rail shooters like Star Fox or Panzer Dragoon, you got to check it out. This game was super fun and to the point where I'm like, I kind of just want to shut the camera off and go play it again. So, uh, of course, before I go to do that, of course, if you like this video, please like the video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, again, this these videos will go up every Friday, except for this one. I kind of had a, a game that wasn't really coming together, um, so we actually switched to this game instead. And I'm actually glad I did because this game's awesome. Um, but obviously, every Friday, unless something like this happens, then it's Saturday. But at least once a week. Good thing it is, is if you're subscribed. You won't have to worry about that because you'll see whenever they go live. Also, I have a review coming out next week on this channel. Y'all better be excited for it uh, in, in the middle of next week. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So anyways, this has been the third episode of First Impressions. My name is Ryan Turford, and you can follow me on Twitter anytime at Ryan Turford as well. You can also follow the Xbox Drive, our Xbox podcast, over on your podcast service of choice, Google Play, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that stuff. Anyways, have yourselves an amazing evening, and thanks for watching.